Raven Elise TV. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven, and today I'm here with a new Wow African Wednesday, even though it is not Wednesday. I know my video schedule has been all messed up lately, so it is technically Thursday, but we're still gonna call it Wow African Wednesday, and I'm here with some new hair. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of talk you through how I achieved this look and what I even got going on on my head. So if you're interested in learning all about this hairstyle, then just stay tuned. So first of all, this hair looks super orange on camera, and it is kind of brown coppery um, in real life too but I just want you guys to know that it does look way more orange on camera than it does in real life if you want to get a better idea of how the color actually looks in real life you can check out the pictures on my Instagram I'll put my Instagram right here and it'll be down below as usual so definitely check out my Instagram follow me if you haven't and you can see some way better representations of this hair color but yeah so to start off with this hair was just some curly bundles and a closure from Wow African of course I We'll put the exact name links all the details down below so you can just click on a link and go to exactly what I got but yeah it was just some curly bundles and a closure like I said so I was going to be making my own wig but I knew I didn't just want to leave the hair black because I already have a curly black wig from when I did the Zendaya video um, I'll link that video down below as well if you guys remember I did the big curly black look for the Zendaya look so I didn't want to just kind of repeat that so I knew I wanted to color this hair and I really wanted Wanted it to be blonde so I got a bucket of powder bleach I got some 30 volume developer I got some of the lightener packet stuff which kind of boosts the bleach power and then what else did I get I got some toner well it's not toner it's like gray platinum gray hair dye like basically silver hair dye and I also had some purple hair dye left over and my idea was to tone the hair and get rid of the really yellowy orangey brassiness I was gonna put the silver hair dye over it and kind of just hope that that toned the hair and maybe mix in a little bit of purple dye because purple cancels out yellow so basically this was just going to be an experiment so I started off with the closure and I just took the curly closure and applied applied the bleach to it in kind of an ombre like rooted way I knew I wanted to still have these dark roots and kind of a little bit of an ombre effect so I did that and I ended up going over the closure twice with the bleach I put the bleach on I let it sit for about 25 minutes I rinsed it off and then I applied it again let it sit for another 25 minutes and rinsed it off so with two rounds of bleaching I was able to lighten the hair pretty good still not to the amount that I originally wanted it to um, but it lightened as far as it was gonna get with that bleach I was just trying to make the bundles match the lightness of the closure so it took a lot of bleach I literally used the entire bucket of bleach which I don't know how many ounces come in that bucket but usually when I buy those buckets I'm able to do maybe two heads of hair with it because it's a lot of bleach that comes in there um, but I used so much bleach because I mean this is a lot of hairs four whole bundles plus a closure and it's curly and it's thick and it just took so much bleach so by the end of it all I basically ran out of bleach ran out of time ran out of energy ran out of everything and this is only as light as I could get the hair now if I do want to go back and make it more blonde more light more ashier more silverier um, which is what I wanted in the first place I will just have to get more bleach bleach the whole thing again maybe even two more times with the bleach and then tone it and then so basically going from that super black hair to a super light blonde is a process and you need professional stuff like you need professional bleach you need professional you need to know what you're doing and I don't really know what I'm doing so I don't know all in all this is not the color that I wanted every time I try to do blonde hair it doesn't come out right because it's just so hard to get black hair to that perfect blonde if you're not a hair colorist like if you just don't know what you're doing so yeah this is the color that I got I mean it's cute it's kind of like a little bit of a honey blonde a little bit of a light brown um a little bit more coppery than I wanted it but you know whatever so after I bleached all the hair it was super yellow looking super orange looking and I did not want to look like a carrot top although like I said I still look like a carrot top on camera right now it does look better in real life but I knew I wanted to tone down those yellow tones so the way that you do that is by using a toner but none of the beauty supply stores around here had any actual toner so I looked up a few ways online of how to tone hair without actually having a proper toner and they basically 
said to use blue and purple dyes mixed with conditioner to kind of slightly, slightly, slightly dye the hair purple, which kind of cancels out those brassy colors and it'll make your blonde look a lot more nice and ashy. So I mixed a little bit of the Adore purple dye with a lot of the Adore platinum silver colored dye and I put that with my conditioner and I just slathered the hair with the conditioner dye mixture um, in order to kind of neutralize the blonde color. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna work at all. I didn't want the hair to come out purple or silver, but um, I think it worked a little bit, especially on some areas around the front and some of the parts back here are lighter, um, which you can see it did actually tone the hair pretty nicely. It's not super yellow or like vibrant like that or anything. It's just kind of a nice blonde color. So this is really more of the color I was going for back here. I should have put those pieces more to the front so you could see them. But um, yeah, so I do think the little toning experiment worked pretty good. Um, so that was a plus, but it would have worked even better if the hair was actually as light as I wanted to be in the first place. But you live and you learn. I probably am gonna go over it. So I will definitely update you guys if I do end up re-bleaching this again and I'll show you guys the results. But also on top of that, I didn't wanna completely destroy and fry and just bleach the crap out of this hair because I wanted it to be big and curly and nice. And when you put bleach and bleach and bleach, the curls just get ruined. So I didn't want to completely ruin the curls. That's why I was afraid to bleach it too much. But even though I did end up bleaching it quite a bit, you can see that this hair is still very curly, very fluffy, very nice, and it held up to the bleach really, really well. So that's the whole coloring process. Now in terms of actually making this wig, I didn't want to go into too much detail on how I actually made the wig because there are so, 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 so many videos already on YouTube of how to make a wig. Even I have made a few of those types of videos, but usually I glue the tracks onto my um, cap whenever I make a wig. I love the gluing method. I do not like to sew because it takes so long and I'm very impatient. And I switch my hair so much anyway that gluing it works just fine for me because I don't need my wigs to last for months and months and months. I just wear them for maybe two weeks. So the glue is fine. But um, I know in the comments, a lot of you guys always ask about sewing the hair because it is more secure and it does last longer so I did a full sewn wig on this one um, because I knew that I was going to really want to wear this wig a lot make sure that it was just sturdy and just more perfect than just gluing it so I did sew the tracks onto the cap and sew the closure onto the cap so all you have to do for that is take a stretchy spandex dome cap or you can even use a netted um, cap type of thing but I like the stretchy ones and you just put it onto your styrofoam wig head you get your wig weaving thread and your weaving needle and you of course thread your needle tie a knot at the end and then you just place your closure where it goes. I like to clip up my closure so that all the hair is not in the way and then you can kind of just pin the closure into place with some t-pins and then you just stitch the closure onto the wig cap. It's pretty self-explanatory if you know how to sew anyway this is just the same thing. If you don't know how to sew it's super super easy. You literally stick the needle through the closure through the cap bring it back up stick it through bring it back up stick it through bring it back up and you're just doing a whip stitch all around the perimeter of the closure to attach it to the cap so once your closure is fully attached to the cap all you have to do is take your tracks and just sew them onto place onto the wig as well it's the same formation same idea as when I show you how I glue them on but of course instead of just you know gluing them on you have to hold it there and sew it on just the same way that you sew it on the closure it is pretty easy it's just more time consuming because you do have to do each stitch on each track and then another one and then another one and so it took me a couple of hours altogether to fully sew on the track whereas when I do the glue method it literally takes me 30 minutes to make an entire wig it's so much faster but like I said I wanted to sew this one so in the end it's worth it because it's 100% sturdy you can wash it, you can get it wet you can do whatever you want to it and nothing is going to happen to it um so yeah so you just sew all these tracks into place. Another good thing about sewing it is that you do not have to cut the wefts at all. You can literally take your entire bundle and sew it and then just flip it over, sew it, and then kind of you're zigzagging the track up the wig so you don't need to like do one strip and then cut it off and do another strip and then cut it off. You can just leave it connected and then just bring it back around and basically, like I said, zigzag it up. Like I said, there's tons and tons of tutorials on how to make a wig using the sewing method on YouTube. So if you need more information on how to do that, then definitely just type it in your search bar. 
So in terms of attaching the wig onto my head and making sure that it doesn't go anywhere, right now, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's really just balancing on my head. It doesn't have any clips, it's not sewn on, it's not even bobby pinned on, it's just literally just on my head. When I do get ready to actually wear this wig out, I am going to cornrow my hair and I am going to sew the wig down to my braids around the perimeter. So you guys always ask me in the comments about, you know, how can I make this more long lasting? How can I make it more secure? Can I sew it to my braids? Yes, you can. All you have to do is create, you know, cornrows, make some perimeter braids, especially make sure that those are really, you know, tight and good braids. And then you just take your weaving needle and just like you would with any like sewing or anything, you would just attach it to your braids um, with the thread. But yeah, the reason why I was planning on sewing this wig onto my braids and actually attaching it is because I am going on a trip to California in about a week for my spring break. I will be in San Diego slash LA. And of course I am planning to have a meetup for all my LA and San Diego peoples out there. I've been wanting to see you guys. I've been wanting to come out there. This is my first time going to California ever. So I'll definitely put more information about that on my Twitter and Instagram as I know it. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to wear this hair for my vacation and I did not want to worry about it like, you know, taking it on and off, clipping it on and off, whatever. I just wanted to be on my head for the week. And since this is a fully sewn wig, it's completely durable and, you know, waterproof. The thread, the cap, the hair is all water friendly. It can get wet, it'll dry, nothing will happen to it. Whereas if this was, you know, created with glue, the glue might melt a little bit, the glue might disintegrate a little bit if it gets wet. So the fact that this is completely sewn is very, very sturdy. And then like I said, I can just sew it onto my braids and it'll just be done. I can swim in it, I can go to the beach in it, I can do whatever I want, wash it, be fine. So that's why I am probably going to just sew this on to my head so that it's very, you know, sturdy and durable and just wear it for my week in California. So that's really all I have for this video. I definitely want to kind of play around with this wig a little bit more and make it more of my original vision. It's not quite right, but I still think it's cute. Um, so I'll definitely update you guys if I do do anything else to this wig. And I'll also update you on my trip to California. So look out for that on my Twitter and Instagram. Um, but other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.